Hey guys, it's Sasha. US inflation data just came in this morning and it's at 3.2%, which is higher than the 3.1% from last month. And predictably, the media is throwing a hissy fit and telling everyone to panic. US core inflation tops forecasts again, reinforcing Fed caution, says Bloomberg. Inflation comes in higher than expected for fourth straight month, says Forbes. Because look, the month to month number is plus 0.4% and this is the highest it's been since September last year. So inflation is coming back, it's going to go back up from here. Oh no, we're all doomed. Nobody wants to actually look at the numbers and think for themselves. Everyone would just prefer to parrot the same bullshit. Except the actual data says the exact opposite. This inflation report is actually really good. And since nobody else will, I want to break down what this inflation report actually means for the US economy, what's actually happening with inflation, and what this means for the stock market. First up, if you look at the February month on month data, the overall increase is 0.4%. But if you scroll down through the key items in the table below, where are the big increases coming from? Well, it's not coming from food. Food is at 0% month on month. And ignoring the crazy swings during the pandemic, this is the lowest month on month read since April 2019. Food at home is now sitting at 1% year on year inflation. This is incredibly good given it was at 13.5% just a year and a half ago. And it continues moving down. It was at 1.2% last month. But then we come to energy. And you can see that energy ticked up 2.3% in just one month. And energy by itself is a relatively low proportion of total inflation. It's only 6.6%. But indirectly, energy is also part of many other parts of inflation in this report. Because you know, food needs energy to be produced and to be transported. So the real impact of energy and inflation is probably more like double, maybe around 13%. So if you use 13%, for example, it means that the 2.3% increase in energy month on month contributed 0.3% out of the 0.4% increase in February. So almost all of the month on month increase is because gasoline and utility gas prices went up a lot in one month. Oil price in February did go up slightly compared to January, but over the last 12 months, the price has been relatively stable, sitting within 10%-ish of the $80 mark. In fact, the oil price at the moment is still relatively low since Russia invaded Ukraine two years ago. The price for piped gas went up a lot in January and in February, so you think that you know the price of natural gas must be spiking what's going on but no natural gas prices on the futures market keep going down it was 35 percent cheaper in february than the same month a year ago and in fact february was one of the cheapest months for natural gas commodity prices in the last 25 years but of course the energy companies are there sucking the last bit of blood out of consumers nobody dares say anything about it the u.s regulators are impotent the government are too busy being in the pocket of the energy company company bribes because when the commodity prices increased in 2022, so did the price that the customers have to pay. Immediately, the moment the prices went up, customer bills exploded. But when the commodity prices collapsed right back down in 2023, for some weird reason, the price for gas did not come right back down. Mm, but anyway, going back to the inflation report, core inflation is sitting at 3.8%. And the only thing that's holding core inflation and inflation overall above 2% is shelter. You can see that shelter is at 5.7% year on year and it went up 0.4% in February. Shelter is 36% of the overall index and it's 45% of core inflation. So it's by far the biggest factor in the inflation report. And if you work it out, without shelter, even with the high monthly read for energy, without shelter, Core inflation is at 2.2% and overall inflation is at 1.8%. So what's going on with shelter? Because that's the only thing holding everything up. Well, inflation on shelter has been coming down, but very, very slowly. You can see it's coming down at roughly the same sort of speed. It was going up after the rent prices and house prices exploded during COVID. And the reason it's so slow is because shelter is a lagging indicator. Shelter is measured based on surveys of what people pay for their accommodation. And you can see that 7.6% out of shelter's total weight of 36% comes from rent. And 26.8% comes from owner's equivalent rent, which is the way that the Bureau of Labor Statistics approximates the amount that people pay for their mortgage. So the vast majority of it is from 
people who owned their properties. And here is the problem. As interest rates are high, US mortgage rates continue being very high. The best offers are at 6.25% according to bank rate, and the average rate is at over 7%. Now, this doesn't affect people who don't want or need to move. But for anyone who has to move, this will mean a big increase in the monthly payment for a house of the same value compared to the much cheaper mortgages from three years ago. This has nothing to do with inflation of house prices. It is everything to do with high interest rates. And anyone who doesn't have to move, well, they're not moving and their prices are not changing. The number of home sales in the US is currently sitting below 4 million a month. That's a very low number historically because people are not moving. House prices have fallen. The overall numbers are down a bit in 2023, but because of inflation and the high interest rates, house sales naturally swing towards more expensive properties in terms of the distribution. The cheaper houses don't sell as well when times are tough because the budgets of the rich are not affected by the price of eggs in your local supermarket. Market. So the real house prices in the US, if you were doing a statistical like for like sample, those prices are down much more than average. And at the same time, rent prices have stopped going up full stop. The latest data from Zumpa shows that year on year rent increases are at zero, as in actually at zero. So shelter inflation is coming down, but it is reducing very slowly, in part because the rate at which people are moving is slow. So if people don't move, then they don't experience any change in what they pay. If you own a property, for example, unless you choose to remortgage onto a much more expensive rate. And shelter is also being artificially held up by these high interest rates. So we have a huge chicken and egg problem. Inflation overall, except shelter, is already below 2%. It's been below 2% for a while. It's in the data. Shelter is a lagging indicator, and it's kept artificially high by the high interest rates. Fed is keeping those interest rates high to battle the stubborn inflation. But inflation is only stubborn because the Fed is keeping the interest rates high. That's the situation we're in right now because the only thing holding inflation overall up is shelter, which at the moment is driven entirely by interest rates and not by increases in rent prices and not by increases in house prices. This is a ludicrous situation. It is a Mexican standoff where the Fed is one of the people in the standoff, but they are too stupid to realize because they keep parroting the same bullshit about stubborn inflation. But which bit in particular is stubborn? Point me to it. Is it food that is already at 2% and food at home is at 1%? No. Clothes are at 0%. New cars are at 0.4%. Used cars are at minus 1.8%. Alcohol and tobacco are a bit higher, but they have negligible weights. Other than volatile energy prices that are kept high because of corrupt energy companies and the lagging shelter indicator that is kept high by the Fed refusing to reduce rates, which particular bit of inflation is sticky? Please tell me, which particular bit of inflation is a cause for concern? Oh, it's car insurance. Car insurance is up 20.6% year on year. And what could possibly be causing that? Well, according to the official narrative, this is the same thing that gets printed over and over. Throughout the country, auto insurance costs have continued to climb over the past few years as natural disasters have become a greater threat to drivers and as vehicles prove more costly to repair and replace. But then I went and read the Berkshire Hathaway annual report from a few days ago because remember, they own Geico, one off if not the biggest car insurance company in the United States. Look at this table. Insurance underwriting went from pretty much zero in 2022 in terms of profits to 5.4 billion dollars worth of profit in 2023. Interesting. So I thought, well, this kind of looks big. And I went and pulled up a few more years of the same data from Berkshire Hathaway's old reports. And then I looked at some more data going back even further. And isn't it funny that in the year when insurance premiums started going up at a crazy unprecedented rate, you know, because of natural disasters and because repairing cars are so expensive. Well, in that year, Berkshire Hathaway's insurance business just happens to have a crazy record-breaking year, making more than twice as much as in any other year in the 20 years that I looked at before that. And here is what the Berkshire Hathaway report says about it. Earnings in 2023 benefited from relatively low losses from significant catastrophe events during the year and improved underwriting results at Geico compared to 2022, reflecting in the 
impact of premium rate increases and lower claims frequencies. So the insurance industry is printing money. They're fucking taking the piss. The regulators are saying that rates are going up because of natural disasters and high repair costs. The truth is the exact opposite. Insurance companies are raking in insane record profits never seen before because of, quote, relatively low losses from significant catastrophe events and reflecting the impacts of premium rate increases and lower claims frequencies. So the short version is the insurance industry is taking everyone for a ride. The regulators are in on what is basically a legalized cartel and the US government does not give a shit because those insurance companies pay a lot of money for election campaigns. The point is inflation overall in the United States is done. It's gone. It's well below the 2% mark. You can see it in the data. The the only reason the overall number is still higher is because of unchecked profiteering by the energy and insurance industries and because the Fed is refusing to do any actual analysis and reduce rates which would accelerate the drop in shelter prices. The next meeting of the Federal Open Market Committee is on March 19th and 20th in a few days. And of course you know exactly what the dimwits who sit on that committee are going to say. They'll say inflation is sticking, we have to wait to see what happens and there's a long road ahead and we have to make sure we get down to 2%, it's gonna be a difficult job. You could probably make a good drinking bingo game out of the regurgitated phrases that Grandpa Powell uses over and over because none of the people on that committee are actually capable of thinking for themselves or doing any analysis or actually understanding data. None of them have a clue what the fuck it is that they are doing. I said the same exact thing three years ago when inflation was running like crazy and the Fed was just sitting there in mid-2021 ignoring it, saying it's just gonna go away all by itself. It's transitory. It doesn't matter. Look, we know because we're fucking experts. And I say the same thing today when you can clearly see in the data that inflation is done. The slightly higher read at the moment is completely artificial, not based on the underlying data. And it could be snuffed out very quickly if the US regulators and the Fed actually wanted to do their job. The next meeting after the coming one is in April, at the end of April, on April 30th to May 1st. And there's only one more month of data to come in before that happens. So there isn't any chance, there's not gonna be any change in course at that meeting. The Fed is sitting there driving while staring in the rear view mirror. The road has already turned, but the Fed just keeps going straight into the fucking ditch because they want to wait until they see the turn behind them. Because that's how these dimwits operate. There is pretty much zero chance that the rates will drop before the June meeting. And the main inflation data will be published in the morning on the second day of that meeting. And the big question is, how long will the Fed play this Mexican standoff that they don't realize they're in, where the high rate is keeping the overall inflation up instead of working to bring it down as I think they think it's doing? Do we need to see market deflation except for shelter before the Fed blinks? Do we need to see prices drive in reverse, which would have significantly worse outcomes before the Fed realizes that they don't know what they're doing. Why was the Fed okay with increasing rates by just a quarter of a percent or half a percent in March 2022 when the interest rate was at zero, but inflation was already at 8.5%. But now inflation is down to 3.2% and below 2% in reality, but now interest rates are at 5.5%. It makes no sense. And I know a lot of people think that this is all part of some kind of grandiose master plan. You know, those guys are really smart. They know exactly what they're doing. But I don't tend to attribute sophistication and smart intent when incompetence and being really fucking dumb and bad at your job are a far better explanation.